All right, so unfortunately, I do have to make another video right now discussing some of the strategic mistakes that I think the squad is making in pushing for the policy agenda that we are supposedly all fighting together for. So, and I say unfortunately because I genuinely don't like talking about the squad. I don't like having to give these critiques because these are supposed to be the people who are, in theory, supposed to be the people who are inside fighting for us and fighting alongside us. But with the strategies that they've been using and the rhetoric that they've been using recently, it's just been honestly pathetic we had aoc the other day and i didn't even bother making a video about this but we had aoc the other day saying that biden exceeded her expectations um and granted you know there's an argument there that okay if your uh, your expectations were already below the floor then maybe he exceeded expectations but i don't think that's smart rhetorically our job is to be constantly pushing joe biden to the left or pushing him off a cliff if that's what it takes um but giving him too much credit at the expense of holding him accountable for what he's not doing is not a smart move. And here's Pramila Jayapal um, coming to Joe Biden's defense again in a similar way to how AOC did the other day and even going a step further and giving him a grade of an A. So let's go ahead and hear what she had to say about this and then I'll tell you why I think this is a terrible strategy. Okay, let's move on to President Biden and how he's doing. Um, one of your progressive, uh, your fellow progressives in the House, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, says that he's exceeded her expectations and expectations for progressives. Do you agree? I do. Uh, you know, I think that this has been a really interesting time for us to see how the progressive movement at large, all the progressive voters, young voters, voters of color that came out and turned out for the president in November, helping us to win the White House, the Senate and the House, uh, and the pandemic and the way in which it has just um, really sh shined such a bright light on all the in inequalities that have existed, I think President Biden has risen to the moment. And I really do give him an A in what he's done so far. It's been bold, it's been progressive, it's been what the country needs. He hasn't shied away from it, he has leaned into it. And we're hoping that the same continues to happen as we go through the process to pass the jobs and families plan. Yeah, so what? I mean, based on what? So if you're, again, if your expectations were already on the floor for Joe Biden, okay, I understand that, but your expectations shouldn't be on the floor. Your expectations should be that Joe Biden uses the power that he has at his disposal in order to advance the policy agenda that we, or progressives in Congress, are supposedly fighting for. That should be your expectation and nothing less. And you should fight for him to meet that expectation or nothing less. I mean, what is what is the strategy here of giving him an A? Giving him an A on what? I mean, we can go issue by issue on this. On what? Immigration? What has Joe Biden done on immigration so far? He hasn't seriously grappled with the underlying causes of why people are fleeing their countries and coming to the border in the first place. He's still trying to overthrow the Venezuelan government. He's still meddling in the affairs of South America, Central America, still doing the same destabilizing practices, still launching the drug war, hasn't legalized weed at the federal level, even though that would have massive implications from a criminal justice angle, from a, uh, a immigration angle, etc hasn't done that on immigration. He's still building Trump's border wall. Okay, let's go to the next one. How about health care? What has Joe Biden done on health care? Well, he's given massive subsidies, COBRA subsidies to health insurance companies. He's slightly expanded the ACA, but he hasn't done anything substantive on health care. He, he hasn't, he had the authority at the beginning of the pandemic or when he took office, he had the ability by himself unilaterally to cover everyone during the duration of the pandemic through Medicare, to expand Medicare as an emergency uh, provision in order to cover everybody during the pandemic. He didn't do that. Okay, so terrible on health care, terrible on immigration. How about foreign policy? Well, he blew the easiest foreign policy layup you could possibly imagine, hasn't gotten us back into the Iran nuclear deal. He bombed Syria and killed, what was it, 22 people for basically no reason whatsoever. He hasn't held Saudi Arabia accountable or stepped in to prevent or stop the genocide in Yemen that we are still complicit in, regardless of the positive coverage that he got from that, he actually hasn't taken any concrete steps in order to remove the Saudi blockade that's causing a famine in Yemen, where hundreds of thousands of children are at risk of dying. So he's complicit in a genocide in that sense. He didn't hold Saudi Arabia accountable for the killing of Jamal Khashoggi, even though he released a report saying that Saudi Arabia killed an American journalist, uh, an American uh, resident and journalist. 
So terrible on foreign policy, terrible on immigration, terrible on health care. Where else do we want to go on immigration or on infrastructure? How about this next infrastructure plan? That's a $2 trillion infrastructure plan over eight years when the American Society of Civil Engineers estimates in order to bring our infrastructure up to a grade of a B plus, just a B plus, not an A plus or even an A as she's already given Biden, just to bring our infrastructure up to a grade of a B plus, we would need to invest about $5 trillion over the next five years. Joe Biden wants to spend $2 trillion over the next eight years which is like a third of what we spend yearly on our military budget, which reminds me, he also asked for a larger military budget. So what exactly, he also hasn't canceled student debt. He has the power to cancel 100% of federally owned student loan debt, hasn't done that. So what exactly the fuck are you talking about? I mean, citation required on claims like this, but for them to just give him blanket praise like this, doesn't make sense from even a rhetorical strategy. And this is part of the mindset that the squad has been using to try to put forward our agenda and advance our agenda, and it's not fucking working. And so what is that strategy? Well, they think, and we got this also from how AOC was talking about it in her praising of Joe Biden the other day, they think the strategy for getting our policies passed is to cozy up to the establishment, is to lean into Joe Biden and try to be his buddy and, and take the pats on the head as they retweet you on Twitter and as they pretend as if they're listening to your ideas and then the second that they have to even moderately fight for it, they give up. So the squad is satisfied with trying to cozy up to the establishment who gives them pats on the head while we don't actually move in any structural change direction. And meanwhile, they're losing out on these opportunities to leverage strategy, to leverage their position of power in order to pass our agenda. So we didn't get the $15 minimum wage in the $1.9 trillion COVID relief package. The squad didn't use the leverage that they had during that moment in order to force it into the package. They're not going to use it in this next infrastructure package, it looks like, in order to force it to be in the package. So they're not willing to fight Joe Biden. They're not willing to even criticize Joe Biden. So I don't know how else to frame this other than this is either dishonest or delusional because she should know it's not an A. It's not an A. You can't give him an A. On what? You need to cite examples of what you would be giving him an A for. I mean, what are we comparing to here? Are we comparing him, oh, he gets an A compared to Donald Trump, who was an F? Oh, well, fucking congratulations. That's the lowest bar that's ever existed in the history of humanity. I mean, it's really pathetic, and it's not going to help advance our policy agenda, because what message does this send to Joe Biden? The message that this sends to Joe Biden, giving him an A, or saying that he exceeded our expectations, is telling him he doesn't have to do anything. That's telling him, oh, I already placated these people and I didn't even advance any of their policy goals. And, and they're already satisfied with the pats on the head, with the retweets on Twitter. They're satisfied with that without any concrete moving in the right direction for our strategies, for our policy goals. So you can't be satisfied with the crumbs or they're just gonna keep giving you crumbs. It's really that simple. So the strategy of praising him in this way, and I get it because there is some degree of value to giving credit where it's due. Absolutely, 100%. If you don't give credit where it's due, then people aren't gonna take you seriously. They're not gonna respect your opinions when you're criticizing them. But you can give credit where it's due without taking it to this level. You can give credit where it's due without acting as if he's doing everything at his disposal. You can give credit where it's due um, without sacrificing the criticisms of what he hasn't done. So that's what they need to be doing. We need to see a complete reversal of strategy here. We saw Cory Bush in that interview the other day say that each member of the squad is voting alone and that they just simply vote by themselves or not voting as a cohesive block. So their strategy is just absolutely terrible. We need to see a 180 on this. They need to get together, form a cohesive block, make some policy demands, stop being satisfied with the pats on the head and the crumbs that they're dishing out to you, and actually take on a fight with the establishment because it's a winnable fight. We are right on the policy issues. The American people support our policy agenda. So just go out and fucking fight for it.